Thanks for joining us here today. If this is your first time or you're returning to us, let me encourage you to go to JesusIsTheRock.org. While you're there, give us an update on how God is working in your life. Now, if He's working life change through our ministries, let me encourage you to give to us financially on the website by clicking the giving button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Thank you so very much for tuning in today, and welcome to Church. Isaiah chapter 9. We're going to look at the Christmas story before there was a Christmas story. The Old Testament Isaiah was prophesying about the Savior being born. As, as a rule, it's, I don't really look forward to Christmas messages. I love Christmas time, but after almost 30 Christmas messages, you start scratching your head as, what can you say new about this old, old story? What can you say that hasn't been said a thousand times? We've talked about stars and mangers and shepherds and sheep and Bethlehem and, and you know, all, I mean, you start saying God in it. But God is always faithful, it seems like, to give us some kind of new thought or insight. I was telling him at the 830 service, I'll never forget right after Hurricane Katrina, I think Katrina hit in like August or something. And so between then and Christmas, of course, was a, you know, no man's land. Everybody was in recovery. Everybody was displaced. And so in December sometime, Bob Nusko down at Action Printing, he, he had printed three or four of my little books that I had written, my fiction books. And he called me one day and he said, hey, I, I need you to write a track for me. He said, uh, we're going somewhere we need. We're going to give out about 5,000 tracks. And he said, I want it to do with... Hurricane Katrina recovery, but I wanted to tie in with Christmas. He said, can you do something like that? And I said, yeah, let me, let me think about it. Uh, I can probably do that. So when you need it. He said, about two hours. <laughs> and I said, oh, I thought you were in a hurry for it. Um, but the strange thing is, I said, all right. So I got to work on it. We put something together and took it down there to him. And, and I came back, and just a day or two later, I got a call from a local business here in town, and they wanted me to come speak at a, at a Christmas lunch they were having. And I said, all right, is there anything in particular you want me to talk about? And they, funny, they said, I want to talk about hurricane recovery and how everybody, but I want to tie it in with Christmas. I said, I got you covered. I can even bring tracks if you want, you know. So God had already kind of prepared me uh, for that. So God seems to find a way to give us something, and I hope that we'll say something this morning maybe that will bless you. But I'm just going to read two verses out of Isaiah 9. I'm reading out of the King James this morning because that's what's familiar to us really in this passage of scriptures. Verse 6, Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom in order to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. I love that last little phrase. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Harvey, he's, he's, he's zealous about building your mansion. The zeal of the Lord. Let me read it to you, this last little line in New Living. It says, the passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. The passionate commitment. <laughs> He made a commitment that where I go, there you can be also. He's made a commitment that he's going to prepare a place, and the, he's zealous about it. He's excited about it. He's committed to it. But that's not the passage I want to use. I just liked it. The one I want to use is the first line of this uh, verse number six that says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. So I want to talk for a few minutes this morning about Christmas, more specifically about Christmas gifts. Christmas gifts. After all, that's what Christmas is all about, right? Uh, I got some great gifts this morning, and I just all kind of really nice stuff, and I appreciate each and every one of them, some of them just, I mean, just thoughtful, thoughtful gifts, and I thank you for them. But Christmas is 
you know, what'd you get me? What do I get him? What do I, what do I get her? How, how much did they, how much did they spend? Well, we got to spend this and we got to, I, I really, I think we ought to quit calling them gifts and call them trades. Because isn't that what it is, really? Well, they got us something last year, so I got to get them something. Oh, Aunt Lucy's coming. We got to get, there's another gift we got to buy. We got to do this. And so we just sort of trade out all of this stuff. Somebody, I guess, rather cynically said one time, Christmas is when we spend money we don't have to buy things we don't need to give to people we don't even like. <laughs> Maybe that's not fair. But sometimes... Our gift giving gives, gets us into trouble. Not only do we overspend and get ourselves in debt, but inevitably some not so wise husband's going to buy his wife a mop or a dish drain or God help him a, a, a piece of exercise equipment. <laughs> Poor guy will be in the doghouse to well after the new year. Some of you are thinking right now, oh God, I got to go switch this out. I thought I was doing good. Gifts, gifts, gifts. Where did this gift-giving tradition come from? Who knows? Most people attribute it to the wise men who brought gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh to offer to Mary and Joseph when Jesus, after he was born. And that's probably a, as good a, good a guess as any. Uh, I can buy that. But inevitably, the Bible tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. And when I give gifts this season, I, I'd like to think that it would represent a higher and greater gift than just gold or perfume, but rather the gift that God gave the world that first Christmas morning. It said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And what I really want you to see in this verse this morning is maybe something you have or haven't seen before, but, but there's one event taking place, and yet two things are happening. Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Now, I think that traditionally we all easily recognize the first thing, a child is born. There are little baby dolls and little mangers all over the country this morning, you know, and, and you say, what is Christmas? And even children can tell you it's Jesus' birthday. We celebrate the birth of Christ. A child is born. That much is it's kind of obvious. But what's not as obvious, I think, and what sometimes gets looked over is the fact that not only is a child born, but a son was given. A son was given. Every day in this country, many people find themselves in situations expecting a child that they're not expecting. And sometimes they realize, I can't provide for this child. I can't take care of this child. You know, I have, I, I'm not ready to be a mama. I'm not ready to be a daddy. And so we have something called adoption. That when that child is born, they can hand that child over to a parent who they know will love them and care for them, and can provide for them, and give them a good home, and give them a good education, and, and adoption is a wonderful thing. But even, even still, no matter what the circumstances, it's still hard. It has to be hard for that mother to give birth to that child and to hand that child over. Even if it's going into a loving home that they know can give them more than they can. In many cases, in many cases, and Harvey, I know that you've dealt with this in the courts. It gets right down to the time, and maybe even after the birth, the mother says, no, I'm changing my mind. I can't, I'm not giving my baby away because she just gave birth to this child. It's a, it's a hard thing in the best of circumstances. But can you imagine that as God's own son is being born into the world, and remember, God could take care of his son better than anyone else could, he could provide for his child better than anyone else could. He did love his child more than anyone else could. And yet he has a child and he takes his child and he gives his son away, not into the arms of a loving family that's going to take care of him and provide for him and, and watch over him, but he hands him over to a world that he knows will one day murder him. I can't even fathom that. I can't even imagine 
that? Have you ever really thought about that? How could God give his only son to a world he knew would one day kill him? There's an old song that says, God grew the tree that he knew would be used to make the old rugged cross. He grew the tree. He knew that as he handed his child over, that this people he was handing him to would one day kill him. How? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God loved the murderers so much he gave his own son so that the murderers might live. Now, this is not just the birth of a child that we're celebrating. This is the gift of a son. This is the gift that keeps on giving. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, I just want to take a a couple of minutes this morning and just talk about this gift, this gift that keeps on giving. First, the first thing I notice about it is this gift's not wrapped very pretty. The angels spoke to the shepherds on a hillside long ago. Let me stop and just run one little rabbit trail, and I'll get right back to it. Because I just I was reading this the other day, that the shepherds that God spoke to on this hillside were not normal shepherds. They were of the tribe of Levi. They were Le- Levitical shepherds. And they had a job. They, they had so committed their life to God and sacrificed their life to God because these sheep were not ordinary sheep. These sheep were sheep that had been set apart for sacrifice. They weren't sheep to be taken and shorn for their wool. They weren't killed to go on the supper table. They were to be taken for sacrifice. These sheep were sacrificial lambs, and these shepherds were sacrificial shepherds. that They had given their life to watch over these sheep. Isn't it interesting that the first people that God announced the birth of Jesus to were these shepherds and these sheep saying, you're not going to have to be the sacrifice anymore. I'm going to be the sacrifice. I'm sending my son to be the sacrifice for you, that you won't have to go to slaughter anymore. My son's going to go to slaughter. What what an incredible, it's no wonder he spoke to these shepherds and these sheep. How happy were the sheep? You know, think about that. He said, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Now that sounds pretty cute wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. What that means is wrapped in a saddle blanket, lying in a horse trough, right? It's not really as cute as it sounds. It wasn't wrapped very pretty. I mean, if, if we give a gift, you know, we like to take great pride in wrapping it in pretty paper and ribbons and bows. At least most people do. I don't. If I try to wrap a gift, it looks like fish rolled in an old newspaper. You know, I can wrap. You give me enough paper and some duct tape, I'll get it covered up for you. But it's not going to be pretty. God bless the guy who invented gift bags. Um, But if I were giving the world a gift, particularly my son, a savior, a redeemer, I think I would have at least wrapped it in pretty paper. I would have let him been born in the Taj Mahal with golden walls and marble counters, and I would have, I would have invited kings and, and magistrates and heads of countries and presidents, and, and, and I would have, not shepherds and sheep. But see, the thing is, God was much more interested in the gift rather than the wrapping. He still is, you know. Oh, I know you can sing and dance and speak Hebrew and Greek and speak in tongues and cast out devils and and all this stuff, but listen to me. That's just paper. Don't get mad at me. That's just paper. It's pretty paper, and paper's paper's pretty. It's nothing nothing wrong with the paper, but it's just paper. See, let me show you what somebody says. I have the gift of healing or the gift of tongues or the gift. See, what we have is the gift of Jesus. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit, the healing, the tongues, the prophet. They're just, they're wrapping paper. And wrapping paper is beautiful and tongues are great and prophecy is wonderful and healing is this as long as you don't just take the paper and throw away the gift. Right? You know how frustrating that is when you give a kid a present and he takes the 
the gift out, starts playing with a box. You're like, I could have got you a box for Christmas. You'd have been just as happy, right? And, and I'm a, I think that's what we as adults tend to do too. We want to we play with the paper and don't appreciate the gift. And I think that's what Paul meant when he said, though I have the gift of prophecy and speak with tongues and have all knowledge and give my body to be burned, if I don't have love, it profits me nothing. It's just pretty paper. It's just wrapping. He says it's just bells and, and clanging cymbals. So what is, what is the gift that God's wanting us to give this season? That's what I want to get to. That's, that's, that's my point. I believe God's wanting us to follow his example and give of ourselves. More, more than, than something you can buy at Walmart. Nothing wrong with that stuff, but that's not what he's after. So yeah, you may say, well, I can't preach, or I can't sing, or I can't teach a class. I don't have anything to give. God says, hey, I didn't ask you for pretty paper. I ask you for the gift. You may have to lay it in a horse trough, but that's okay. I did too. You may not can sing or preach or teach and this, but God's wanting to give you to give the gift that he's given you. Maybe you can go visit a nursing home. Maybe you can fix somebody a pecan pie. I like pecan pie, by the way, if you take taking notes. I'm kidding. I'm on a diet. I can't eat. Maybe you can go rake somebody's yard, an elderly person's yard. You know, just, I mean, you, you, you're creating the image of God. You use your imagination. Listen, you may not feel like you're wrapped pretty, pretty, very pretty, but I'm telling you, God has put a gift in you. And God wants us to use, give the treasure that he has put in you, give of yourself. It's too easy, church, for us to run down to Walmart, buy dad a screwdriver and mom a mixer and, you know, Aunt Lucy a new purse and checking folks off our list. That's fine. That's all, that's all good. But when's the last time you really gave of yourself a gift that cost you something? You had to think about, can you imagine God so loved the world? He gave his kid. He gave his son. And God says, I want you to give with that kind of a heart. I want you to give something that you got to think about. You got to put some effort into. If you're going to remember the fact that a child is born and a son is given, if Christmas is, that's what Christmas is really about, then do something that's going to cost you something. Something that you're gonna, that's going to remind you of what Christmas really is about. Not just a child being born, but a son being given. We're celebrating much more than, it's great to celebrate when a child is born, but the fact that we're celebrating a son being given. The unbelievable sacrifice made for us. What can you do this season to give a gift that will keep on giving? I hope before this season's over, you'll find a way to give the gift of yourself some way. If we really want to celebrate Christmas and what God did for us that first Christmas morning, then we need to find a way to give a gift that keeps on giving. Don't just, don't just give tokens. Tokens are fine, but don't let that be the core of your Christmas this year. You say, I don't have any money to go buy and I don't have anything. I promise you, God has put a gift in you. God has put a gift in you. Give it away. If he's put it in you, he's put it in you to give it away. Give it away. Get it, find a way. Get creative. We talked about this just a few weeks ago. One of the greatest attributes of God is his ability to create. And the first day, in the beginning, God said, let there be, and there was. And God said, let there be trees. And there was. Let there be water. And there was. He created. He had this incredible imagination. I mean, he didn't just create animals and create all horses or dogs. But he created giraffes. Can you imagine? What was he thinking? I mean, get this horse. Let me pull his neck up here. And just, you know, zebras. It's just kind of, God had this incredible imagination. I don't know what would provoke him to create an armadillo. <laughs> but he did. He's got this amazing imagination. And he said, you're created in his image and in his likeness. Don't just get a toaster this year. Come on, we're better than that. We're created in the image and likeness of God himself. 
Use your imagination. Say, God, I want to give a gift this year that's going to mean something. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bow your heads with us. God, we just bless you today. We thank you so much. Not only that you allowed Jesus to be born, but you were willing, God, to give him away. And God, I just thank you that you saw fit to create man different than the animals. You said you were creating man in your image, in your likeness. And God, as we celebrate this year, let us think like you, God. Let us use our imagination, God, of how we can be a blessing to others around us. Thank you for this church, for this family, for this body of believers. God, we just bless you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you'd stand to your feet. Again, we are incredibly glad to be joining us here today at Church of God. I encourage you to go to the website. There you can find any of our archive podcasts. You can send us an email about how God's working in your life or a prayer request. Or you can give to our ministries financially by clicking the getting button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Have a blessed day.